Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. I am wrapped up, and it is early morning here in Georgia. Um, happy hump day to you guys. Um, getting a lot done today, which is good. Um, and I should have a couple of videos for you guys today, one to two, um, if not a lot more than that, uh, because we're just speeding through the end of the Bermuda set. Um, as you guys can see, I'm wrapped up because hell is always freezing over in my house. For some reason, it's always super freaking cold in case you're wondering why I'm always in like a hoodie and like, you know, this is actually part of my hoodie, the gloves type thing. But <clears throat> just in case you're always wondering, like, why is he wearing all those clothes in his house? Well, my house is freezing and I have roommates uh, that want to change the temperature. Um, so, yeah, but let's get right into the video um, for this video. Uh, which is actually, we're going to be discussing the duo deck. Um, so the duo deck's pretty cool. It's actually one of my favorite Bermuda decks out of this set. Um, just because, not because it's strong in any way, or because it's like super OP or anything like that. It's just super fun to play in my opinion, and it really fits my play style. Um, which is getting a lot of cards to your hand, and then you have kind of natural options to aggro your opponent. Um, and so your cards just do the work for you while you're building card advantage. And those are the types of decks that I really, really like. So let's get right into it. So first, uh, for our Greed 3, we have four Duo Eternal Sister Mirror. Um, as you guys know about duos, um, something special about them is that um, a couple things. So number one, uh, they usually rely on using some effects um, and then they get like an additional effect. Usually if you reveal three or more copies of the same card in your hand. So you want to uh, get a bunch of cards in your hand that have the same names so that you can start revealing them for the effect. But also a second like thing that doesn't matter towards the actual play style of the deck, um, but something that is just player preference, is whether you want to play the black or the white version of the card. So every card has a black and white version. Obviously area just has one version, racist. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so let's talk about uh, Dual Eternal Sister Mirror, uh, our main grade three for the deck. So um, Dual Eternal Sister Mirror has a um, a limit break effect that we never ever use in this deck. Um, it's just not really useful and there's no way to use it because we don't run the other grade 3 that it has to do with. But um, we'll go over it anyways. Uh, limit break 4, at the end of the battle this unit attacks a vanguard. You can counter boss 1 and choose 3 cards from your hand and discard them. Um, if you do, you can choose a card named True uh, Dual True Sister Mirror from your soul. Write it as stand and then you choose a card uh, named Dual Eternal Sister Mirror from your soul and put it into your hand and then you discard a card. So basically this card allows you to uh, re-ride the other mirror from your um, hand and then um, actually do you do it from hand? Yeah, yeah, so you actually choose a Dual True Sister Mirror from your soul and then you ride it at stand and then you choose this mirror that's on the top and then you put it into your hand and you discard a card. Like I said, will never be relevant in this deck just because we don't run the other mirror and that's not the reason that we run this card. The reason that we run this card um, for our main grade three is actually the second ability because the second ability is really, really useful as far as uh, getting your dual engine started off. So it has an activation vanguard skill that's once per turn. It says counter boss one and soul boss one. Choose one of your rear guards, return it to your hand, search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that unit, reveal it to your opponent, put into your hand, shuffle your deck, and then choose a card from your hand and put into the soul. So if you have um, just one, at least one combo piece to work off of, um, and you ride to grade three first, like Mirror can really get you going, um, start searching out other copies from your deck, and then if you have other cards in this deck that search out this, uh, copies too, like Roan, um, like Kazuha, like your starter Roan. Um, so things like that just get you started off really easily. Then um, for our backup grade three, we have three dual sprinkle light uh, Priani. So what Priani does is it's basically just our ride fixer. And what I mean by that is whenever we're not on mirror, it helps us get to mirror. Um, basically at the end of your turn, you can soul blast one. If you do choose two or more cards with dual in its name with the same card name from each other and reveal them. If you reveal two or more cards, then you search your deck for a grade three card with duo in its name other than this card's name. Write it on Vanguard Circle as rest. Shuffle your deck. And then if you rode um, and revealed three or more cards, then you draw a card. So basically, um, what that means is that you want to use this skill um, at the end of the turn to ride Mirror. And then if you uh, reveal three of the same name when you revealed, 
that you can just draw a card. So it just makes it a free plus, which is pretty cool. And it changes your heart at the same time. Um, then, uh, moving into our grade twos, we have four dual creamy caramel cornet. Um, cornet is basically just our beater of the deck. Uh, her effect is pretty simplistic. It is when this unit is placed on rearguard circle. If we have a vanguard with duo in its name, this unit gets plus 2000 power. And then we can choose up to three cards with duo in its card name and reveal them from our hand. If we reveal three cards and all the cards have the same name, then this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So when you play it, it just gets 2k off the bat, so it's an 11k attacker. If you reveal three or more cards with the same name, it gets plus 5,000 more, so it's a 16k attacker by itself. Pretty solid. Uh, then we have four duo mini hat Roan. Uh, Roan is kind of like our early game card, something that we want to ride or play on the regular circle in the early game to start getting our hits in because uh, it's easier to get hits in the earlier because your opponent is a uh, lower power and they have less cards to guard with. So um, Rome is very has a very good Vanguard rearguard skill that says when this unit's attack hits a Vanguard, if you have a Bermuda Triangle rearguard, or sorry, uh, Bermuda Triangle Vanguard, you can counterblast one duo card and then choose another one of your Bermuda Triangle cards, return it to your hand, search your deck for one card with the same name, reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So this card gets you a free plus one. Um, and allows you to bounce something to your hand to get it out of the way so that you don't have to be touched by control or anything like that. Uh, but also allows you to start building your copy engine as well. Then we have um, four of a new card that we got in this set, which is Dual Memorial Day Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl used to be a, uh, I believe, a grade one, uh, but she got upgraded to grade two now. Uh, she got a grade two version that is really good. Uh, it has two abilities, and it is also a 10k base, so that's something to be aware of as well. We usually ride this card if we can get the first skill off. If we can't, then we try not to ride this card, because uh, sometimes that means that we won't be able to drive check. So, um, the skill of this card is, when it's placed on Vanguard or Rigor Circle, we can reveal two cards with Duo in its name, with the same name, or reveal uh, one Cheryl, of, like one copy of itself from hand. If you do not reveal a card, this card, um, or if you do not reveal uh, either one of the effects, this uh, unit cannot attack a Vanguard until the end of the turn. So when you're playing on Rearguard Circle and they have Rearguards, that's fine. Uh, if you're playing on Vanguard Circle and they don't have any Rearguards, that's not fine because you need to reveal a Cheryl or two cards with the same duo name or just not ride this card. Um, and the secondary ability is... When this unit is returned to your hand from the rearguard circle, if you have a Vanguard with Duo in its name, you counter boss one and draw a card. So, rewards you for bouncing it back to hand, pretty simplistic. I wish it was like Peace, where it refunds the counter bots if you reveal copies, but it's not. It just draws you a card. Really just meant to be used for the early game. Going into our grade ones, we have two Shandies. Uh, this is just our stride fodder in the deck. Uh, we discard it to stride because we have less, you know, we don't want to run just grade threes. In this deck, because there's no way to really re refund our grade threes, we can put them back into our deck, but not directly from our drop zone into our hand like Reindeer or something can. So we do run two Shandies um, so that we can stride with them. We don't use the first ability because um, we this is not a lore deck and there's no way to search out lures when we don't run any. Um, then for our PG, we run the new PG, which is uh, for Duo Achievement Promise Tolima. So what Colima does is it has two abilities. The first one is a Sentinel ability, meaning that you can't run more than four Sentinels in your deck. You guys know that already. And the second ability is pretty good, um, but also pretty different for a PG. Uh, let's talk about it. So the skill is uh, when this unit is placed on Guard Circle, if you have a Vanguard with Duo and it's the card name, you can uh, pay the cost. If you do, uh, you select a dual card um, in your hand and discard it. And then you choose one of your units that's being attacked and cannot be hit until the end of the battle. And then you choose up to three cards with Duo in its card name from your drop zone and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. And then if three um, cards were put with the same name were put um, onto the bottom, you draw a card and you counter charge one. So you're able to recycle your drop zone, like even triggers uh, with this effect. So it can be really, really good. And if you're on your last PG, like out of your four, you can just shove the three PGs back into the deck. And... Um, can draw and counter charge and so it just keeps you endlessly going and uh that's your way of not decking out in this uh, deck even though you draw a lot of cards um then we have four dual gorgeous lady kazuha kazuha has a skill that's kind of like roan um almost exactly like roan but it's boosting instead so when an attack hits a vanguard during the battle that this unit boosted 
counter boss one duo card. If you do, choose one of your other rare guards with duo in its card name, return it to your hand, search your deck for one card with the same name, and reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So, um, if you hit, like, with a Roan and Cosmo Hug column, and then you counter boss two, you get to do the exact same thing. Like, bounce two cards, search for two copies of those cards, and then get them to your hand. Um, the main card that we want to do that with is this card actually right here, which is a uh, dual petite etoile um, piece. So, uh, pieces skill is when it's returned to the hand from Rearguard Circle. If we have a Vanguard with dual in its name, we can counter boss one. If we do, we draw a card and then we choose up to three cards, um, or we can choose up to three cards uh, named dual uh, petite etal uh, piece from your hand and reveal them. If you reveal three cards, then you choose a card from your damage zone and you turn it face up. So you counter boss one to draw and then you counter charge if you have three or more. So basically if you have three or more in your hand, it's a free draw and you can play three of these to the field, bounce three, draw three for free. So just really good. It's our draw engine um, and you lose them sometimes, but you can always get them back with the PG and stuff. So nothing's ever gone forever. Um, then we have one duo minimum truth Roan. Uh, so what Roan does is it has Forerunner, meaning that it can move back to a rear guard circle when ridden upon, like most starters in the deck. Um, the second ability is when an attack hits a vanguard during the battle that this unit boosted. Choose one of your rear guards with duo in its name and you may return it to your hand. If you do look at the top seven cards from your deck, choose any number of the cards with the same name as the unit that you bounce and put into your hand and shuffle your deck. So I thought that this starter was really, really good at first when I first read it, and it really is good. Uh, but only if you hit it and top seven actually is not that consistent of a number for you to look at the top and get the unit that you bounce so a lot of times when we use this skill we do with um, but when it does hit it is very useful um then for our triggers we run 12 crit and four heal not really much to say there no reason to run stands or anything else like that so we just run crits um the first crit that we run is actually a uh, duo crit that has an ability which is duo love trump uh chum chulum uh so what chulum does is when another of your units is returned to your hand from rear guard circle um if you have a duo vanguard you can counter boss one and put this card on the top of your deck if you do search your deck for up to one card with the same name as the unit return uh revealed or as the unit returned uh search it get it add it to your hand shuffle your deck um and yeah, it's basically but just puts a crit back in your deck um, for the cost of getting something else that is usually a normal unit. So very, very good card, um, thins your deck. Not much to say about that. Um, gets things done, gets your combo pieces that you need, um, helps you a lot. Then we run um, four Scion, four Madeira, uh, which basically both of these are um, really just uh, vanilla crit triggers, but it's important that we run these ones because they are the duo uh, crit triggers. So we have a lot of cards that have special counter boss duo in this deck. So we want to make sure that you have duo cards. Then we have four duo tropical healer uh, Mahalda. Um, basically, we're just running it over the new heal because it is a duo card. Not much to say about that. Um, then we have one zeroth dragon of distancy megiddo uh it is our ultimate stride for magalania and our zeroth dragon so uh let's talk about a few things regarding it i know you guys are tired of hearing me talk about it because i've been talking about it like every bermuda video um but this is our ultimate stride so a couple things to remind you guys of if you for no some reason i've never seen ultimate stride but this is your first time seeing it um you have to have three cards face up in your g zone to go into it and then the other um, requirement for going into it is that you have to discard the same name to stride as what's on your Vanguard. So if you have a mirror on your Vanguard, you have to discard a mirror to go into Megiddo. Um, and Megiddo is, uh, and then if you fail to kill your opponent during the turn, your entire G zone will get removed from play. Um, so unless you've already used up your entire G zone, you really want to pick and choose uh, when you use Megiddo and when you don't. Um, just because you want to make sure that you can kill your opponent on that turn or there's nothing left that can be used in your G-Zone anyways. Um, so most of the time there's always a better option to go into besides Megiddo if you're not sure that you can finish your opponent. Uh, but if you are sure, why not just go into it. Um, the skill is when this unit is placed on Vanguard Circle Counter Boss 2, if you do choose up to 5 cards in total from your hand and drop zone, call them to Rear Guard Circle and they get plus 5,000 power. At the end of the battle, um, they get to switch out with another rear guard. So 
the thing that's really cool about this deck is that you can use Megiddo, and then you can play like four coronets if you've been through four coronets in the game and they're in your drop zone you can actually Megiddo get four coronets and then for all the coronets you can just reveal three cards of the same card and they will become 21k um and be able to switch at the end of the battle with other units so um attacking for a bunch of 21ks can really hurt your opponent and um it's not very likely that they'll survive if they're at five damage and they have like six or seven cards in their hand because they're already dealing with six attacks including the vanguard um and then we have four dual amazing sister mirror uh this is our new mirror stride that we got out of the set it's not that that good but it is still useful um its skill is activation uh soul blast one and choose a face down card from your g zone and turn it face up if you have a heart card with duo in its name choose one of your rear guards with duo in its name for each face up um dual amazing sister mirror in your g zone and return all your uh return all the rear guards with the same name as that unit to the hand and then this unit gets plus five thousand and the critical for um until the end of the turn for every two cards return so i actually think um that this card would have been way better if it got like five thousand in the critical for each card belt <sighs> Ooh, sorry guys like i said it's really early um but i do think that this card would be better um if it got plus five thousand in the critical for every card bounce um seeing as though you only have five rear guard circles and it's impossible to make it gain 15k because you'll never be able to bounce six units so you can really only bounce a uh, maximum four um you can bounce maximum five but you can only get benefit off of a maximum of four which is plus 10k and two critical uh moving on we have two chocho -cho popular favor tirua uh tirua has two abilities um is mostly run in every bermuda deck even if it's chocho -cho or not just because it's our restander um so it has a two abilities First is an activation Vanguard once per turn ability that says choose a card uh, from your G zone and turn it face up. I usually just flip mirror in this deck just because you get effects off of having mirror face up anyways. And then um, this unit gets an, a continuous ability. It says all the units with Chocho -cho in its card name in your front row gets plus 5,000 power for each of your open rear guard circles. So um, not much to explain about that. Uh, you basically attack the first time. And then the second time you'll be way bigger because you'll have open rear guard circles. Um, so your Vanguard will be 15k bigger. And then the Generation Break 3 ability is at the end of the battle of this unit attacked. Choose up to three of your rear guards and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, if three cards were put, you stand this unit and it gets minus two drives. So just a restander, not much to say about that. Um, then we have two dual everlasting Reet. Uh, this is our one of our duo strides as well. We could just run four of this card, but honestly, like, the G zone space was kind of tight. Um, so unless we want to cut Tirua, which Tirua has its uses in certain situations, being able to flip anything and being able to restand on its own without flipping uh, is just really useful. That means that we can run four restanding cards rather than just two. And what I mean by that is um, we can actually have two reets, but each reet uh used another re so we actually just have one restander in the form of re uh whereas if we have four reads we would have two restanders and now that we have tirua we have three restanders because each tirua counts as its own and then the reads uh count as two so the limit break four ability skill is at the end of the battle that this unit attacked if you have a heart card with duo in its name you may counter boss one and choose three cards with the same card name as each other and discard them if you do uh, put this unit back to g zone choose one uh dual everlasting reap from your g zone that is in your g zone face down and then stride it on your vanguard as stand and it gets minus one drive and all of its auto abilities are lost so it's basically like a, a next stage um if you guys remember that card uh chrono dragon next stage in gear chronicle it allows you to get five drive checks and it also allows a restand in a way but you shouldn't uh, stack your triggers on vanguard unless you're sure that you're going to pass the attack just because those triggers will be lost when you transfer over to the new REIT for your second attack. Um, then we have one perfect performance Ange, basically just used against Link Choker. Its skill is activation Vanguard skill once per turn, generation break two, uh, counter boss two, and choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. Choose any number of cards on any spider's circle other than Vanguard circle and return them to the hand, which means that you can return locked units and all that good stuff. Um, so this unit gets plus 5,000 for every returned card. So the end of the turn and then if you return five or more cards you draw a card if you return seven or more cards this unit gets plus one drive so 
Your opponent usually will have units on the board if they're playing Link Joker. Uh, you'll be able to just play a whole board, fill whatever spaces of yours are um, that don't have a card in it already, and then you can um, use Ang skill to bounce them all to your hand and then uh, get however much power and then you have to get plus one drive and draw a card. Then we have one dual idol Emperor Kuna. We never really go into Kuna, but we go into her in situations where we can't really do anything else. Uh, but Kuna's ability is when this unit attack hits a vanguard, choose two cards from your hand, reveal them. Your opponent chooses, uh, picks a card out of the two, and then you search your deck for one card with the same name as the card, uh, reveal it, put into your hand, shuffle your deck, and if the card put into your hand is dual in its card name, then you counter charge one. So, um, just a decent card, a decent on hit card for first stride. If we don't have anything good in our hand or we don't have any combo pieces, a uh, very good card to use just because it's a uh, post drive check. So you can check your combo pieces and then start using them with, uh, or start getting things off of them with Kuna. Moving on to our G guards, we have one best sparkle Sandy. This is our generation break one G flip G guard that we got in the fighter selection a little while ago. Uh, this unit says when this unit is placed on guard circle, uh, if you're Generation Break 1 already, you can flip a G-Guardian face up. If you do, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield for every two cards in your hand until the end of the battle. And then you may counter boss 1 to have it gain 5,000 more shield. So, obviously, the more cards you have in your hand, the bigger the guard. And then if you need a little more shield, you can counter boss 1 to give it plus 5. Uh, and then we usually use the skill to flip over Ellie, since Ellie is more useful with more Ellie's face up in the G-Zone. Um, but let's go right into that. So we have two Luxury Wave Ellie. Luxury Wave Ellie's skill is uh, continuous on the guard circle. With this unit gets plus 10,000 shield for each face-up Luxury Wave Ellie in your G-Zone and Sentinel in your drop zone. So um, the later in the game it goes, uh, the more PGs in your drop zone and the more Ellie's that are face-up, the bigger this card's shield will be. But um, And then the second ability allows you to reuse it. So Generation Break 2. When this unit is placed into your G-Zone face up, you can Soul Loss 1 to turn this card back face down. So you can reuse your heals, you can reuse your G-Guards. You just have to make sure that you have the soul to sustain what you're trying to do. Um, then we have one Hand in Hand Leona. A uh, Hand in Hand Leona says when this unit is placed on Guard Circle, you may choose one of your rear guards and return it to your hand. If you do, you choose the card from your hand, call it to Guard Circle. And if that unit has the same card name as the unit played, um, that you bounce, then it gets plus 5,000 shield. So you can make anything from uh, 26 to 31 to 36 to 41 to 46 uh, with Leona. So just very, very good as a guardian. Then we have um, one high society Citron. Uh, what Citron does is when it's placed on the guard circle, choose one grade one or greater card from your hand, call it to rear guard circle. And then if you call the unit, this unit gets plus 10,000 shield until the end of the battle. Pretty self-explanatory um not much to say about that but let's get right into the games here we're going to be reopening our card fight area here so that we can take a gander at the games um all right so we're going to be loading duo deck one um, so first game it looks like we're playing against like some kind of like Chrono Fang Demiurge hybrid thing. Uh, so we ride, um, we pass over, uh, they attack us, we take a damage, we get a mirror. Uh, we don't have a grade 2 so we decide to stay on grade 1. We check a grade 2 uh, and then we use the skill of Roan to check top 7, we don't get anything. And then um, our opponent rides a grade 2, attacks us for 13, we take it. And then we ride a grade 2, reveal a Cheryl, um, and then we attack for 15. Uh, my opponent no guards, I put the crit all to Vanguard because the other one can't attack um, anyways because we didn't reveal for it. Uh, so we use Roan to check top 7 and bounce it, and then we use the skill to counter boss draw. Um, so our opponent rides into Chrono Fang uh, from their hand. They use the skill of Chrono Fang to bind something from their hand, and then we put a card into our deck and shuffle and get minus two copies of it. But if it's grade one or grade zero, we don't get anything because there's nothing less than zero, basically. Um, he uses the bind zone effect to counter boss one, soul boss one, and then bind the top card and call this card out to the field.
And then um, my opponent uh, attacks for 16. I no guard. Uh, gets the stand trigger, puts the power to his vanguard, and then he passes turn over to me. Um, I don't know if he just didn't want to give me damage or what, but we use uh, the skill of Cheryl to reveal two, and then we use dual sister mirror to bounce two piece. Uh, before we use piece skill, we use Chulam to counter boss one and get a piece. Uh, and then we use piece skill times two to draw two for free, and we reveal two to counter charge two. Uh, so then we attack for 32 with two crit. Our opponent no guards, we check a heal trigger, power to rear guard. Um, our starter roan and a crit trigger. So our opponent takes three damage. One, two, and then three. Um, so our opponent heals off a damage, uh, which is good for them because we were putting a lot of pressure on them that they probably didn't want to have that early. Um, so we stride um, into Altered Dragon um, or they stride into Altered Dragon. Uh, they are thinking, I think, uh, and they end up calling a, a Volturo Idea Drone and then taking it back. Um, so they're just thinking about their moves. Uh, they play a Spring Rabbit to bind a card, uh, bind a ZTB on the Rear Guard Circle to draw one and Soul Charge one. Um, and then they use the skill of Alter Dragon to flip uh, Pegasus. And then they check the top five. They bind two of those. And then they put the rest back, shuffle, and then they counter charge one because their bind zone is over five. Um, and then their Vanguard gets plus 10,000 as well. Um, our opponent plays Volturo. Idea Drone again and regrets it, so they take it back. Um, and then they use the skill of the starter to draw a card. They play Manish, uh, Idea Drone, and a Stand Trigger. And then their front row gets plus 1k because of the Pegasus. And that's face up in the G zone. Um, so our opponent attacks for 16. We guard with a 0. Our opponent attacks. Um, or opponent's thinking yeah um, so my opponent thought that you counter boss one like and use the skill that's in red text but I had to explain to them that that's, on, that's an on hit skill so they were forced to put this back but Kind of the, the reason why I say it's always important to carefully read a card's skills because you, if you don't use it uh, correctly, you don't know what you're doing, then you have to change the whole game state, and normally that would have just been a game loss. But I kept going. Uh, my opponent attacked me for 18 while binding the top card to use the skill active. I guard with a 10k, and then they tag Vanguard for 41. Um, check nothing. Check a crit. Um, all to Vanguard. And then they check a grade three. So we get a heal trigger, auto vanguard, and then a crit trigger, auto vanguard as well. Um, so our opponent uh, restands his rear guard and then attacks our rear guard and binds his card. Uh, we stride into um, the mirror. We play a coronet, reveal three um, piece. And then we use the skill to uh, play all of our pieces from our hand. We use the skill of Mirror to bounce um, four cards. And then it gets plus 10k and two critical. And then we use piece times three to draw three cards for free. And then we play double coronet. Um, or sorry, we just play one coronet. And we play one Cheryl uh, revealing two so that it will be able to attack a Vanguard. Play the booster. Um, we play our starter as our booster again and then we attack for 16 then 41 three crit our opponent g guards here they use the g guard skill um to soul charge one and then they use lishu to make it a one to pass they intercept for a two to pass and they call a card from their hand for a three to pass they use the skill of the hot 
to bind the top card of their deck. Um, it ends up being a crit, so that ends up being a bad move for them. And then uh, they do a three to pass. And we check a heal trigger going back down in damage. And then we attack for 22 uh, using the skill to counter boss one, return cornet, get another cornet. And then um, our opponent strides for turn. Our opponent strides for turn into Chrono Tiger Gear Glare. Um, our opponent's moving so slow. I'm sorry, guys. Like, funny because this is like, you know, a couple times the speed that he was moving at, but he was actually just moving this slow. Um, but he uses Anarchia uh, Idea Drone to get skills off of it. And he binds the card. Puts one to soul, calls out um, Anarchia again uh, to, you know, shuffle, add one card to hand, add one card to soul, put one card in the drop zone, or sorry, in the bind zone. Um, so, then he tries to bind, um, the Voltoro, but he can't because it's not G, uh, it's not ZTB. So, then he decides to use his Soul Blast for something different instead, which is the Chrono Tiger Gear Glare Flip. And then he sends all of our Rigards to the bottom of the deck. His Vanguard gets plus one critical and plus one drive, as well as 10,000 power. So he attacks us, we PG, um, dropping a grade three, and then we use the skill to select three of our grade threes in the drop zone, put them on the bottom, they all have the same name, we draw and have a charge. Um, so our opponent checks a grade two, a grade two, and then a grade three, and this is when I knew that it was pretty much over. That's when I knew it was pretty much over for my opponent. Um, so we just stride into re here. Uh, we play double uh, coronet, reveal three. Um, they turn into 16 Ks. So we enter the battle phase, attack for 16. And our opponent intercepts and blocks with another card as well. We attack for 26. Um, our opponent G-Guards into Rathana, uh, using the skill to put a grade 1 in, call a grade 0 out. It gets plus uh, 10k, so 36. We can check a critical, all to rear guard. And then we attack for 21. Oh, sorry guys. First we use Reach skill to uh, re-ride reach from the G zone and then we attack we get another critical trigger all to rear guard and uh, nothing and then we attack for 26 3 crit and our opponent just loses the game because they cannot block any further so that was a really good game actually showcasing you know how the Bermuda, uh, how the duo deck kind of plays it's kind of very grindy as you guys saw in my hand in that last game at the very end um, I think I had a couple PGs and a couple heals or at least just a couple ways to survive in general. So that's important. Um, second game, we're playing against Gize Luard. Um, our opponent starts, they ride. Uh, we ride, we attack them. We use critical all to Vanguard. And then we use the skill of Roan to bounce. Check top seven, we don't get anything. And then our opponent rides Dagda. And as they attack, they get a critical trigger. Uh, we ride Cheryl, reveal Cheryl. We call Roan and Kazwa. We use the skill of uh, Roan. And then the um, and then we attack with our Vanguard and we crit him. 
Uh, so he's barely checking triggers right now. We have him at high damage, which is really good against Gize. He also has the G assist for grade three, so that's kind of uncool, but it does help us regardless in the end. Um, so our opponent plays a card. They draw two cards. Then our opponent attacks for 11. We no guard it because we do want a damage for what we're planning to do. And then uh, we get attacked for 14. Um, so we ride Mir. Um, so our opponent, uh, we go into Kuna and our opponent guards for two to pass. Uh, honestly, I was hoping that we hit it, but we didn't. Um, our opponent strides right here, goes into Dragabus Luard, uh, retires our card. And then now he's using Dragabus skill to Soul Blast out, um, flip a copy of Dragabus and call two cards out. So he calls out Slaptail Dragon. And Abyssal Owl, both of them get plus three because of Slobtail skill. Um, uses the skill of his grade two to draw two more cards, get a little deeper into his deck. He takes a PG, a stand trigger, and a grade one vanilla. Uh, we take damage like no tomorrow. Um, not like no tomorrow, but enough damage to make an impact. So we go into Tirua because we know that he has a PG, but if we check a crit on our first, uh, like, go round or on our fourth check, it'd be really, really good. So uh, our opponent PGs, we check a crit, put all to Vanguard, and a heal all to Vanguard. I knew that he didn't have a second PG. So we put three cards at the bottom, restand, and he does heal. Um, or sorry, we, we check a heal, but he does not check a heal, so that ends up being game for him. Um, was a well-fought game. I honestly hate, like, the Gize deck because I hate auto-win decks in any game. But yeah, it's just one of those things where you rush them, um, they can't check a damage trigger against you, so you can play whatever you can or want to that will hit. Um, and then once you do that... Uh, you can dictate kind of what your opponent does. Um, so game three, we're also playing against the same, very same guy uh, that has the Luard Gize deck. So he rides and then he just chooses to play a booster, use the skill to drop a card, rest a card. Um, and then we ride, if we attack our opponent, he guards for a one to pass. We do get that one to pass and we bounce our card, check top seven, but we don't get it. Uh, which kind of sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, then our opponent plays a rear guard, uh, attacks with it, and we take the vanguard. He gets the stand trigger, so it does affect us, and uh, we we have to take it. So our hand is really crappy, for lack of a better word. Uh, so we use mirror to try to get our um, pieces going up, and then uh, he actually no-passes our vanguard, which I did not expect. Um... But I guess that is something that I should mention since I didn't expect that. Like, try to keep your units off the board against control. Uh, because they can do a lot of things with their units. Um, then he uses the Onshide skill to call Abyssal Owl, retires my card. Then he uses Drag Abyss skill to call two. Uh, one of them that he calls is a Deer Ad. My starter gets retired and the Soul Blast one draws one. And then you just decide to play it. Uh, so 33. Alright. And then uh, he attacks us for 14. I checked the critical trigger though. Um, um, yeah. And then uh, we're, we have a really crappy hand still. So we're still trying to fix our hand uh, instead of striding. So we just, we just attack for 11. At this point, our momentum is slowing down a lot because we need that early game to keep the momentum high. Uh, but we crit our opponent, and he takes two damage. 
I guess he uh, bound from top to see if there would be triggers or not. Um, so he ends up uh, taking two damage and then uh, turn passes over to him. He uses Luard skill to strike for free. And uh, then he uses Dragobus skill. Uh, but he doesn't have any soul, so he doesn't use it after all. Um, he attacks a Vanguard. We decide to go with a uh, PG. Um, so we PG, uh, we put back three crit triggers. We draw a card and counter turn one, which is really good. Our opponent checks a heal trigger, a stand trigger, and another stand trigger. So basically that's what sealed our fate actually because our opponent checked a lot of triggers and they're gonna use a. Um, but uh, we did want to have a uh, stride into our mirror. Um, I wish that we had the crit trigger, but we don't. So we just have to make do. But we use pieces skill times two to draw. Um, and then the second time around, I reveal three so that I can counter charge. Um, so I attack rearguard to rearguard and then attack a vanguard to crit um, to vanguard. And we get a heal trigger, which doesn't really help us against Gize. Uh, but then we pass turn. Um, our opponent goes into ultimate stride for Gize. Um, so our opponent goes into Gize, uh, binding all the cards from their G-Zone and binding all the face-up cards from their deck, or sorry, uh, binding all the cards on the field. Um, so then he attacks with Gize, we G-Guard into Sandy, which is a no-pass, and then he checks the draw trigger. I uh, tried to get power to a zero with, but it wouldn't be affected by anything. Uh, if I had not been wanting to G-Guard it anyways, I would have just told him. Um, so we stride. Bruh. Uh, but we play, we go into Chocho Tier Road to try to finish him because it's the only thing big enough to um, accurately hit Gize, um, but he no passes us, and we don't check any triggers except for a heal. We put the power to Vanguard, and then we put three cards back to the bottom. Uh, Jura gets 10k or uh, 15k, and then he no passes it again. So at the beginning of his turn, we just take two damage because of Gize, and we end up losing because of Gize. Uh, but yeah, Gize is stupid. Auto index are dumb. <laughs> But yeah, with that being said, that has been the future fight for the duo deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up on the video. Helps a lot more than you guys think. Also lets me know what you guys like uh, so I can do types of decks like that in the future. Um, also, if you want to keep up with the channel and support the channel, be sure to subscribe. And after you subscribe, press the bell button so that you can get notifications whenever my videos go live. Uh, you can check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our social media is down in the description down below. I like to post a lot of little things going on with the channel on the Facebook page. And then if you are interested in supporting the channel beyond uh, just liking and subscribing, uh, you are free to check out our Patreon and our merch store as well. But with that being said, this has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.